and I will be happy to answer them. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get rocking and rolling uh, so we can get through as much as possible. Um, even if we don't get through the whole thing today, this is a huge presentation, but I want you to take it back, look through it, and, um, and glean from it what will work for you. All right. Um, so let's rock and roll, go forward a little bit. Here are our objectives. We're going to review AACPS guidance. Um, very important to do that. We're going to explore some AI platforms and dive deeper into Copilot, which is our preferred AI um, generative AI platform for the county. Um, explore ways to leverage AI and creation of authentic assessment. Um, so really using it to help facilitate creative thinking skills. And then we're going to practice using some AI platforms to perform some different tasks. Um, as with uh, as I say, with all of my presentations, um, it is very easy to go down a rabbit hole when we start playing. Um, if you are if you are playing along with some AI stuff and you start looking at AI and seeing a um, and seeing a direct way that it can work for a problem that you have right now, um, feel free to deviate. Um, you, you do, <laughs> feel free to uh, feel free to to play and explore because that's where you get a lot of knowledge and a lot of learning from as you ex as you explore and as you play with AI. Um, so if you start going down a rabbit hole and you have a personal goal and being here today, where all there's 57 of us in the class, we're all here for different reasons. If you see something that's a little bit divergent that you think you would benefit you in using AI moving forward, um, you know I always encourage you to go ahead and start playing that. And if you do have questions that come up during that play process that's what we're here for all right um i want to give you a little glimpse of the future how many of y'all have seen this before give me a hands up if you have oh oh all right so yeah i have i'm gonna put my little thumbs up get a little thumbs up there good good yep yeah. so some of you may have seen this in uh in some of my previous uh in some of my previous uh what do you call them, presentations. Um, but it kind of shows you how we've moved from our, our use of AI in the past, which is, it's weird to think about Alexa being the past. Um, but when we look at uh, how we've integrated AI and started using AI and voice recognition and how we interact with technology, Alexa used to be, you know, the bomb. It used to be like we walk in our home, be like Alexa, put my home into party mode, or Alexa, turn the air down a little bit, or Alexa, turn on the lights so that they're you know blue, or whatever you have them set to. Um, and you could do that, and we thought that was it, but uh, but we've gone so 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 much further. Um, so let's take a look at this one, Figure One, which is already obsolete. There's already Figure Two, but here we go anyway. Actually, I've got to present it as a tab because I don't think you were getting video there. Or you, I don't think you're getting audio. So let me present that as a yeah, tab. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Yeah, just a tab. That one right there for now. We'll switch it back and forth. I usually go a full screen because, um, because I do switch a lot uh, back and forth between lots of different tabs. But for right now, we'll just go with this tab right here. And then... Hopefully we'll have audio. Or it'll just hang up and be terribly embarrassing. All right. Hey, figure one, what do you see right now? I see a red apple on a plate in the center of the table, a drying rack with cups and a plate, and you standing nearby with your hand on the table. Great. Can I have something to eat? Sure thing. Great. Can you explain why you did what you just did while you pick up this trash? On it. So I gave you the apple because it's the only uh, edible item I could provide you with from the table. Great, so based on the scene right now, where do you think the dishes in front of you go next? The dishes on the table, like that plate and cup, are likely to go into the drying rack next. Great, can you put them there? Of course.
Hey, Danny, are you still with us? Okay, I was wondering if it was just the video or Danny also, but I think we lost. I have lost him. We'll give it a couple seconds here. Can you all hear me? Okay. Yes. Thanks. Luckily, Danny's right across the hall, so I'm if I I might run over and <laughs> see if he's okay. The video was kind of stuttering for me, but I didn't know if that was my home network. No, it was stuttery for me too. It looks like uh, looks like he might be working with it here. Hey, Danny, can you hear me? <laughs> that robot did sound a little bit too human for my for my taste. <laughs> it did sound like Rob Lowe, you're right. I was trying to think of who it was. All right, Sarah, that's a little too far, I think. I don't think it sounded like me at all. <laughs> uh, Danny, you're muted. We're glad you're back. They're, they're, they're making jokes at my expense. Oh, Save me. <laughs> that, that was so anticlimactic right there. Um, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, yeah, I started. I it, I think the the video just pushed it over the edge. Like that was just too too much, too much. Um, we're gonna see if I can go back to presenting in a way. What would the robot say? The robot would probably say it could probably do it a lot better um, <laughs> than I just did. Um, I'm just closing out of as many different tabs over here as I can, um, just to to reduce the the load on the system there. Um, and hopefully I'll start is let me know if my present my presentation screen came back up again. Is it back up again? Outstanding. Yeah, okay. Fantastic. We're going to move forward and pretend like that video thing did never happened. Here we go. All right. Thank you. All right. So um, let's try our, our next fun interactive. Hopefully this will be a fun interactive for you. And we're going to take a look at um, at sort of where we are. So I know my my audience here um, where we are in terms of our experience level with AI. Bloop. Here we go. Um, so feel free to, you can either, if you have a copy of the presentation, you can um, you can just click on the link there, or if you wanna use your phone and use the QR code, you're more than welcome to use the QR code for the poll everywhere. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just copy this link and we can put that into chat as well. And that way you can respond that way as well. But I wanna give a, get a kind of a feel for where you are in your current use of AI. There we go. Good, good, good. All right. And there are there are actually three different slides, three different polls. Feel free to go ahead and move on to the next ones if it gives you that opportunity to do so. Love that. I'm going to let you let you have the, uh, the 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 QR code for a bit more. Novice, beginner, intermediate. Good. I'm going to see if I have any advanced people. We have a couple of advanced people. Would you consider yourself advanced and no experts? Fantastic. So. <laughs> No one's going to know more than I am. Hurrah. Um, so, so there we go. That's where we are with our experience level. Let's go to uh, the next one. I just want to see sort of how you're using it. And I love these um, for, for the word clouds. If I go back to the word clouds there, um, feel free to just put in what you're using it for. Give me an idea of, of how we're using those, how we're using our AI.
I love how emails is number one. <laughs> it does do a great job of, uh, of helping you to come back with an email, especially if you have an email where the, the veil of professionalism is coming off and you're not sure how to, uh, how to reply correctly or appropriately. Uh, maybe you're not in the right head spot for that. Um, I always like to think of AI as being Mr. Spock. It's not going to be super emotional. It's just going to lay out the facts for you and give you a very, uh, uh, Oh, poll is full. Oh, that's right. Because there's uh yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. I think it limits it to 50 and there are 57 or 64 of you in here now. All right. For those of you who are responding, thank you very much. For those of you who are not able to respond, um, I apologize for that. Some of us use it every day. Um, some of you use it like a few times a week sporadically. Um, I am in the everyday camp myself. I use it every single day now. Um, I think I go into my office and I think about what the most tedious thing I'm going to be doing today is, and I find a way for AI to do it for me. Um, and so we'll talk about that a little bit moving forward. But what is the one thing that I do not want to do today? What's the one thing that would probably take up the most time, um, but there has got to be an easy way to do it? I would use AI to do that. Um, so sporadically is where we are. I'm, so I'm in the everyday camp. They're good. That's a nice normal distribution there. Um, <laughs> All right. So let's move forward. Uh, that means I can close this tab. Fantastic. Um, so what's new? Um, for those of you who have experience with ChatGPT, it used to be ChatGPT with the free version um, was not able to browse the web. Now it can. Um, it can also you can also do some free image generation with it. Um, and this is just the free version. Um, Yep, and it, yep, the image generation with ChatGPT, the free version is not the best, correct? Yeah, yeah, Sarah. <laughs> um, is ChatGPT approved? Marcus, that's a great question. So let's go ahead and, and, um, and address that now. Um, MOI approval, the way the MOI is, 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 is uh, intended to work is in material of instruction. None of the, the AI that we have available to us right now is a material of instruction because it's not student facing. Um, so whether it's approved, it, it, it's approved for you to use. It is OK for you to use. Let's say it that way. Um, it is OK for you to use any of these platforms. It is perfectly OK for you to explore and use generative AI um, in your uh, in your workflow, in your professional practice. Uh, however, there is a firm and solid wall at this point. This is probably going to change very, very soon. Um, um, oh. Yeah, that's a good point too. Um, so yeah, so to short answer, yes, it is approved for you. Yes. Uh, Magic School AI, that's a great question, Wendy. Magic School AI is not approved um, and you cannot access it through um, through your school Google account. That has already been, that's already been um, not approved for you um, yet, I will say yet. Um, if, you, if you do access those, I, you know, I, I have, my own personal Google account. Sometimes I I, um, I can play with extensions and things that are not available to us right now. Um, but you're always welcome to, to use your own personal, you know, we, we can't tell you what to use and what not to use on your own personal account. Um, at this point, um, Melissa, that's a great question. Are you allowed to submit AI tools for approval? Are you talking about like uh, add-ons and extensions and um, and platforms and things like that? All of them. Um, I'm going to probably, I'm just going to speak from my imagination, um, but I would imagine that the tech office has already received multiple uh, requests for approval of different AI platforms and, um, and, and, uh, yep, different AI platforms and different AI uh, extensions. A lot of that is just, it's not because we're trying to tie anybody's hands or, or keep anybody from uh, having access to these amazing, wonderful tools. But for right now, it's just a security concern um, because they do um, they do present a sort of a, a, a backdoor or an opening for someone to enter our system and our data. And that the security of our data comes first. All right, so it's it's not a matter of not wanting people to have access to these amazing tools. It's a matter of wanting to protect ours and most importantly, our students' data. Um, and so that is why some of these are still being um, reviewed or are not approved. Um, <clears throat> yep, exactly. <laughs> I love this group. All right, let's dive on in. Um, ChatGPT, let's look at that first of all. 
because that was what came out November 22nd, 2019, uh, 2022. Um, rapidly, rapidly visited by multiple people, a billion people within the first three months. It looks just like a chat bot or really just a, a chat screen. Um, it is a large learning model is trained up to now September 2023. So we used to get a message going, I don't know anything from before from after 2021. Now it's trained up to 2023. Not only that, but it can also browse the web for you. So when we say it's trained up on, that means that that is its background knowledge. That's its sort of what it's been what it's been given as far as the information, the breadth and depth of information that it was provided by the trainers. Um, it's the database that it draws from, um, but it is not something that sticks with it. You know, it, it, that is the part that sticks with it permanently. So when it goes out and looks and browses the web, um, it's sort of like uh, it's it's not learning new stuff. It's just acting as a browser at that point. Um, it can be used to generate pretty much anything. Um, text responses, tables, formulas, computer code. I use it to code my uh, my my forms all the time uh, now. So I, if I need to make a Google form, I don't jump into Google Forms. I jump into ChatGPT or Copilot and I have it write the code for the form for me. Um, we might be able to play around with that a little bit. Um, Sarah, yes, it will. Um, and we can maybe talk about that in a second too. I'm going to go very, very fast. All right. So let's go. <laughs> <laughs> you should take my class. Um, yeah, we'll talk about student evaluation too as well. Um, so ChatGPT looks just like this. This is the free version. All of you have access to ChatGPT. Um, when you form a ChatGPT account, it will ask you for a text or, or for a cell phone number. It's asking for that cell phone number um, so that, let me, uh, let me switch to this tab. We'll present this tab instead. Um, bloop, bloop, bloop. Uh, I am going to switch over to full screen at this point because I'm going to be bouncing around all over the place. And we'll see if it doesn't kick me out this time for asking too much of the system. Um, but ChatGPT, when you go in, um, you will uh, it will ask you for a cell phone number. If you don't feel like giving it your cell phone number, you're more than welcome not to give it your cell phone number. Um, you don't have to make an account. I'm not advocating for these accounts. Um, I'm just simply putting out there um, applications and, um, and programs that are available to you. Um, so when you are... Um, when you sign up with uh, ChatGPT, you're more than welcome to use your your school account. Here you can see my little school icon up here. I'm using my my uh, my Google account with uh, with AACPS. Um, over here is every chat that I've ever had. It saves it all over here on the left hand side. It's just like chatting sort of on your phone. Um, I don't need that because I already have it on my phone. Um, there is an app for it. Um, this is the free version. I have my personal account that I pay 20 bucks a month for um, that I have the app on my phone for. Um, but it does, you can do pretty much anything. You can attach a file if you wanted to attach a file. So a lot of times, like I will attach a large data file if I want to, um, if I want to uh, analyze that data inside that file, um, it will do that for me. It'll run all kinds of a statistical test if I need to. Um, if there is a, you know, a feedback or a, a survey that you sent back and you want it to analyze and summarize that survey, you can get the feedback from, uh, you know, if you have that as a file, you can certainly have um, ChatGPT do that for you. Um, if there's a large PDF that you want to summarize or write questions about, that is a like if you have a, a PDF article that you want to um, have your students summarize or have your students answer questions about you can attach the file and say please write me 15 multiple choice questions about this article or about whatever's in this pdf um, please summarize please make a presentation outline based on this pdf um, so there are all kinds of the the, the applications are limitless um, at this point um, and then of course if i wanted to i can just go back in time um, this is for, for those of you who are asking about um, evaluating students. This is my evaluation for like a, 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 a demo evaluation that I do. We'll do that in a second. Um, but I can also go back. I can, I can search these sometimes if I can go up there and search. Um, uh, I can go all the way back in time to the last time I wanted to, uh, you know, if there was a recipe I had or something like that. Um, I can always go back in time, pull it back up again, and then, um, and then, yeah, <laughs> there it is. My dark, but my dark chocolate mini bunk cakes. Um, 
so this recipe is one that I had ChatGPT do for me. It was absolutely amazing. If I wanted to share that, I could just go to share, and it'll give me a uh, it'll give me a link for that. I'm gonna update the link, and then it'll copy that and copy the link. And now everybody has my chat about how to make dark chocolate mini bunk cakes. And there's my recipe. There's the full recipe, half recipe, and if you add peanut butter to it. Um, so you know, it's 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 kind of fun to 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 play around with all of it. You could have it do, um, and this goes for any of the platforms we look at. You can have it do, you know, travel plans or any of that. I'm just having, I'm just pushing the domino here. If I wanted to just copy the entire response, like if I wanted to just have this response, I could just copy it, and then I could paste that into a document or an email or anything I wanted to do from that point on. All right, so um, that's a really quick look at ChatGPT. Um, the first one out. The next one is Copilot. Now for Copilot, um, I was uh, I was given a, uh, a a very extensive license by the county. So if all of you now have Copilot, and um, you may not know that you have Copilot, but I know you have Copilot. Everybody has a Copilot account. So what I want you to do is to go to copilot.microsoft.com. Go ahead on your computers, go to copilot.microsoft.com. And when you go there, um, yours will probably look a lot different from mine. And that is that is okay. But in the upper right-hand corner, um, you might, if you've never used Copilot before, you might uh, have a little button there that says sign in. And when you hit that button that says sign in, I want you to sign in with a work or school account. But I want to make sure that everybody has access to Copilot. So if you're, and I'm just in my Google Chrome browser right now, that and it works perfectly fine there. Um, so I want to make sure everybody has access to Copilot. Mine is going to look a bit different from yours because with my license, I am connected to my 365, meaning that um, I can jump into any of my files at any time, um, connected to my iCloud, and I can I can do any kind of a you know full analysis or a summary. I can pull multiple. Excellent, give me those thumbs up. Let me know you're in. Um, I can pull multiple different files. I can. Um, you click the button the uh, in the presentation. It didn't work. I don't know what that means, Tammy. Ask it. So maybe it's asking you to give it a name. Um, so um, here, let's do the let's do the full. I have a, I'm gonna close out of uh, close out of ChatGPT. We picked a great day to have slow interweb problems. Let me just close out of all this as well. I'm just gonna push all the buttons and fire everything. Let it reload. Um, inside of Copilot, um, you are able to uh, do. It's powered by Dolly, and it's it's powered by Chat TPT four. That's the one that I personally pay twenty dollars a month for. Um, but are able to make. Uh, Generate images. Danny, I don't know if you can hear me, but you're you're you cutting can, in and out um, quite a bit. It's functionality that um, that you uh, that you have in Chat TPT. Okay, yeah, very good. So when it uh, yeah, when it gives you that option, go ahead and click uh, sign in with a work or school account. And you should see up in the upper right-hand corner, you should see a little green shield.
yeah, Danny's frozen again for me as well. Sorry about that, everyone. Um, and that little green shield indicates that our data is safe. This is one of the reasons why Copilot is the Hey, Danny, can you hear me? Uh, that's right, Marcus. Uh, students do not have Copilot. I think we lost him again. Uh, if any of you were able to get into Edge, uh, like he was saying, if you didn't hear him, uh, upper right-hand corner, it's a little greenish, bluish, like he said, shield, which will pop up a side menu where you can chat with Copilot. Um, that is the one I use uh, pretty tip, pretty uh, often um, when I have questions or need need a little assistance with a with a task. Um, not sure if he'll get to this, but just a heads up on the other side of the house, um, we do have uh, teachers also have access to Gemini.google.com, which is Google's AI bot. Um, so if you are an uh, Edge is um, Microsoft's um, browser, so uh, Microsoft uh, Edge uses Copilot, and then you have Chrome. They have Gemini. Is there is their a generative AI um, counterpart to Copilot and ChatGPT? Yeah, yeah. If you're using Chrome, yeah, you can you can go to the Copilot site and use it use Copilot through Chrome. I'm assuming you can use Gemini and Edge if you wanted to as well. Um, I saw someone um, did post that uh, there's uh, possibly plans to introduce Copilot's sidebar menu to engage with the browser window, which is pretty cool. So whatever you have, whatever you're searching for, you have Copilot um, to uh, kind of assist you. Uh, yes, Je yeah, I, I'm in there right now. So Gemini, you can go to gemini.google.com in Chrome. There's Danny. He's yeah, I came back. I am having the worst ever. Thank you for filling in. I really appreciate that. But yeah, I'm having the worst ever tech day over here. All of a sudden, ironically, ironically, <laughs> I'm having the worst ever tech day over here. All right. I've closed out of just about as much as I possibly can. Danny, um, if there's something my... I can pull up and share my screen, maybe that would help if you want to guide me. Uh, I'm happy to do that. Um, sure. Absolutely. Yeah. If you, um, let's see. I'm just trying to. If you want to, um, yeah, just pull out the presentation. That'll work. We'll do the the uh, landing the jet from mission control from the control tower model of, right. of uh, a presentation. Just bring it up now, making a copy. Perfect. So yeah, so um, so I saw in the chat if they were asking if Gemini was approved. Yes, Gemini is approved. You actually already have a, uh, a subscription to Gemini as well. Um, so even if you just type in gemini.google.com and you can go right to Gemini and it'll do a lot of the same stuff there. We are in sort of the um, the like the dot com boom of AI right now. Um, where um yeah let's go on down to slide uh what are we doing on so slide 12 oops yeah the one with copilot yeah there we go perfect thank you darren all right it's very slowly loading up wow we're we're pushing google's to its to its max today um <laughs> so um Yep. So uh, Gemini and Copilot have a lot of the same functionality. Um, they they both actually I, I pulled it up today when I was getting ready for this presentation, and it was uh, it said that it also protected our data as part of our license there. So um, excellent. Um, significant differences between Gemini Copilot and ChatGPT. I will say, uh, Trish, yes, there used to be there used to be very very significant digit uh, uh, differences um, with Copilot. When you went to the Copilot screen and started interacting with it, it would not save your chats in in um, in the browser the way that ChatGPT would. Um, and so, if you close the browser, if you hit new uh, new topic or something like that, then everything you made would go away forever. Yep. 
Um, and so, but now Copilot will actually uh, will actually save your chats over on a sidebar. They store it over on for me over on the uh, right hand side. You can there's a little uh, a little button with a little sidebar on it and you can just push that and it'll go over and it'll save your chats in there now and so that is a huge advantage because oftentimes when we go to uh, a generative ai platform a lot of times what we will do is we will uh, we will we'll start something and we want to go back and work on it later and so um, the ability to do that now inside of Copilot is absolutely massive. Um, they are coming out with new applications and new features inside of Copilot and inside of Gemini and inside all of these platforms um, that are they're rapidly changing all the time. Um, I will say one of the things I miss in Copilot now is that we used to just be able to go in there and I can hit the little microphone and talk to it. And it would and I would be able to talk or speak my prompt into Copilot. Um, and then, um, and then it would, it would talk back to me. Um, but, but now that is, uh, that seems to be not there anymore. Uh, inside of my license, I can go, I can toggle back and forth between work and web. Um, web would be most similar to what you have, uh, with your, with your, uh, member licenses, um, to where you, you basically just using it the same way that you would, um, uh, chat GPT or, or Gemini. A lot of them are going to be very similar. I like to, to kind of just go back and forth between them uh, and see what's new in each of them. Uh, if you're in Copilot, what I want you to do is go ahead and try to, uh, to generate an image. Whenever I'm, uh, whenever I'm generating images with Copilot, um, I'm just going to, Darren, if you want to demonstrate generating an image, you're more than welcome to do that. Um, or anybody else, feel free to generate an image. All right, what do y'all want to see? <laughs> Let's do an image okay. of a... Um, yep. Sorry, I just asked it to create an image of like a roller coaster riding a function because I used to I use that as an analogy in calculus and it was able to do that. So um, I did ask it to uh, make a celebrity with something else and then it, it said it couldn't use copyrighted images of actual people. That's correct. We uh, we one time when we were in a professional development, we wanted to to kind of test it out a little bit, and so we said we want to uh, we want to see a picture of Joe Biden surfing um, while holding a beer, and it would uh, it would it would refuse to make it. So um, it knows that it's an educational license, by the way. So this is one of the things I point out um, is that it's it's there there are guardrails as to what kind of images that you can create uh, using this generator and using this uh, license. Um, so, so yeah, that is, that's definitely something to be aware of. Um, we were eventually able to, to get it to make a picture of a distinguished gentleman in a suit while you know surfing while holding a beverage. Um, so you can, um, you can, you can work it around a little bit there. I see we have some co-pilot images coming up over there on the sidebar with Darren. There's a chicken riding a dinosaur. Okay. Fantastic. <laughs> And you can always go in there and uh, you can um, you can make them, you know, fo more photorealistic. You can make them uh, look like a stained glass window, make them look like a watercolor, make them look like a uh, charcoal drawing. This is really, really good, especially if you're in visual arts and you're talking about like different styles or different. Um, there you go. Um, different styles or different, um, you know, uh, media or things like that. This is a really good way for students to be able to see that because not every no everybody knows what encaustic is or not everybody knows what um, a, re a, a reduction is or something like that. So this is really good for for students to be able to very and for teachers to very very quickly find or generate images for them to show their students as as exemplars. Um, that's a great application of this. Um, who owns these images? Anybody want to guess? Very good, Jeremy. Yeah, Public Jeremy, family. you were in my class before or something, weren't you? <laughs> yeah, nobody owns them. Very good. Um, nobody owns these images. Nobody can copyright these images because these images are not made by people. Um, these images cannot be attributed to a person. They are attributed to a massive data bank that, that yeah, so they're very much like nobody, nobody owns these. Um, I'm thinking that if we, yes, oh, how do you share them? You can right click on them and save them to your drive. You can right click on them and copy them, I think, and paste them into a document. Um, 
but yeah, you just right. I, I just want to right right click on it and save it or right click and copy. Um, yeah. Um, someone else had a um, had another point. Um, oh, that Magic School AI. Yeah, that's that is locked down for for AACPS accounts. <laughs> that's lovely, <laughs> lovely. Um, this message at the top of my Gemini screen. Yep, which I like. Yep, that is the same thing with Copilot, Trish. Yep, that's exactly the same, and that's why we use those because they do protect our data. With that being said, we still never want to enter personally identifiable information into a uh, a generative AI platform. So you want to scrub if you have a data set, or if you have a list, or you have a table. You want to um. You want to scrub any student names, student emails, student ID numbers, addresses, any of that information that's personally identifiable information. Um, that that information is protected. It's federally protected. And we do not want to share that with a learning model. So even though it says our data is protected, I always go the extra step. Never enter any personally identifiable information into a learning model. Um, that's just best practices for right now. Um, let's see. Um, as far as I know, I think I saw a question about um, Copilot limiting the number of um, limiting the number of images. No, not anymore. Um, you can make images all day long. We used to have like tokens, and like you would run out of your tokens. Um, let's see. Here's what we all need today. What is what is that, Sarah? <laughs> it's I don't know what that is, Sarah. I'm scared to click on it. It's a puppy. Oh, did you save it as an image? I want to say. I want to. I want to take a look. You know, sometimes I just go in, and this is probably. I don't know if it's healthy or not. Oh, that is adorable. Yeah, that's an adorable puppy. Um, sometimes I just go in, and I'm like, "Hey, I'm having a rough day. Um, give me a compliment to cheer me up." And so it'll, it'll give me a compliment to cheer me up. I don't want to become codependent on AI, but it's so supportive. All right. Um. So, so there's some. Yeah. Go ahead and and play with uh, with image generation. But let's move forward in our presentation a little bit. Hey, Danny. One question. Um, Copilot yep. reading all of our information stored on the cloud as part of the generative AI. Is that something um, that's happening? Will, um. So. In my license, since it is connected to um, my 365, it can access my information, um, but it's not training itself up on that information. And that's a very important, a very important distinction there. Um, so it can, it has access to it, but it's not training itself on it. Um, so that is, that's a very important distinction to make. Um, and I don't know if that helps out or not, but, but yes. Um, I can have it access the files that I need with my license, um, but it's not just randomly sitting there reading those files. So if I do have it access a file, again, just make sure that the file doesn't have any personally identifiable information in it. Um, prompts, just remember your prompt engineering skills. Some of us already have experience with prompts. You've been practicing with prompts already. We've got an adorable little puppy that proves that, that we know how to use a prompt. But just remember that your prompts are, your products that you get are only as good as the prompts that you provide. So um, you wanna be as specific as possible. I give this, this example often. I love to use um, ChatGPT or generative AI to help me make rubrics. Um, and so a poor example of a prompt for a rubric would be write a rubric about a poster about a rainforest. Well, that's very, very gray. And if you give AI, a generative AI, a lot of gray area, it will fill it in any way it wants. It'll try to do a good job. It's not going to be malicious. It's not nefarious. But what it's trying to do is it, it's trying to do give you a, a, the best possible product. But what I can do to make it better is give it as much detail um, as possible. So a better example would be to write a rubric for a sixth grade biology class. Now I've given it a grade level and a topic, you know, a, a subject um, about the Amazon rainforest. There are lots of different rainforests in the world. We're studying the Amazon um, and the rubric should have the following categories worth this much each. And it should be a table. Um, 
so being able to use our vocabulary and being able to uh, to integrate our professional language into the prompts that we use is extremely beneficial in making sure that we get the products out of it that we put into it. Um, feel free to uh, feel free to try to make a rubric if that suits your needs. Darren, I'm going to have you go ahead and move forward. We only have like 20 minutes left or less than that. We have 15 minutes left. Um, now let's skip this. All right. Um, for playing, um, I do have have this if you want to do it. It takes like two seconds. Um, if you would put the, the link for that word jumble, Darren, just pop it into chat. But what this is, is it gives you a uh, it gives you a just a jumble of words. And my challenge was to have a generative AI try to organize that for you. Um, so. If you have access to that link, if you have the presentation in front of you, feel free to get that jumble of words and let's have AI organize it for you. I've given you no context. See if AI can organize that for you and let somebody kind of give a shout out about what happens. Darren is demonstrating for me on the screen, very good. Yep, there we go. There we go. So it automatically decided that, all right, this is a, uh, a list of people's, their name, first name, last name, um, favorite color, animal, food, and their um, what was the last birth date. And so it was able to just organize that for you. All you had to do was put it in there and say, organize this. Um, and so think about how many times we get messy data and how many times we're given large impossible looking lists of things that we need to organize um ai is very good at detecting patterns and um helping you organize those patterns uh and make it make sense so that's just a little exercise and uh and showing off the uh you know showing off some of the capability of ai darren go back to our presentation we'll go to the next screen Bloop. Hey, Danny, would we want to be careful with that data, though, since it includes birth dates and last names? And... Yes. So that is that's an example of of that would be PII if it were not completely fictitious and made up by me. Got it. Um, yep. Um, so that was yeah, that that's a great point that anything that does have PII, you don't want to you don't want to introduce that. But that particular list was made up entirely by me. Um, so it's completely fictitious. That's a great question. Um, so um, using AI to convert a quiz to code, anybody interested in doing that? <laughs> okay, all right, here's what, uh, here's what I wanna do. Um, Darren, I'm gonna steal the screen back from you for a second. I think we're, I think we're in a stable place over here. Thank you. All right. Um, this is one of my one of the one of my favorite ways to use AI lately, just because we've been using and making a lot of forms and a lot of evaluations. Um, and so uh, let's see, I'm going to just present a tab, just keep it running real low. Um, all right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into uh, Copilot. You can use whichever one you want to. They all are powered by ChatGPT4. Um, so or you know chat tpt so they're all they all that sort of have a, the same background uh, capabilities um but let's go like this i'm going to say um please generate a multiple choice survey for a party i'm throwing i want to no people's favorite appetizers main courses desserts and music all right so i'm just having to make a little survey for me it's all multiple choice i ask it all right and so it came with a survey and i'm just doing this for this point i'm going to go like this please 
uh, generate the Hey, Danny, we're not hearing you. I think uh, Danny is showing us, yeah, his um, his code using the code that he, that the uh, AI generated for him to create a Google form. I'm going to do my best. There we go. Going into the script editor, which would be where you'd put your HTML HTML code that was generated, which I've definitely done also using it to write excel formulas for me i don't know if i could do have some of my job without it I could say I've never done this, but this is cool. I like this. So he told the AI system to create a Google forum that did this, and then it just used Google to do that. He used the Google. Um, so he used no, he used 
he actually used Copilot. He put in the prompt to create the survey questions, and then he asked it to then turn those survey questions into the HTML code that he could then use to uh, use the app script to create the Google form. So it generated the, the survey questions and then the HTML code uh, that you could then use to generate the actual survey. He was saying earlier we had access to the Google AI too. So does Google have the ability to do that without having to spit out the code first? Like you could just tell the Google AI generator? No, it wouldn't just create the form for you. No, you'd have to get the script, the script to go in the background that makes the form do what it does. Okay, got it. Yeah, I I'm asked it yeah, to create a Google. I asked it to create a Google form quiz for a lesson that I literally just wrote, and it gave me the questions. But then I had to say, create code yep. or Google form, and, and it just pop, it, I popped it in, and it, it I, I'm blown away. Yeah, it's cool, huh? I, I, I think I'm confused by that middle step. It's like create the code. Where do I put the code? Am I cutting and pasting that somewhere? Yeah, so he did that was on the screen for a second. If you're in the form, you go to the three dot menu and you go to the script option right here. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Script editor. Yes, that's where you would put. That's where you would paste that code to okay. create the form. Yeah. Well, mind blown. That's amazing. Yeah. Super cool. And I'm just saying, like any of and in a lot of places within our LMS current and moving forward, there is a place to put in that HTML code. So you wouldn't have to create everything. If you have some code, you could paste the code and, and get it, everything created that way. Uh, while Danny's going through things, I'm just going to take this opportunity to post the session attendance for three because we are about one or two minutes away from our time. Um, but um, I know. I will say this has been a lot of fun. Um, tons of really good questions, I think, kind of took us in lots of really cool directions. So I, I appreciate that very much. I'm, I'm sure Danny probably does too. <laughs> yeah, good. Got the thumbs up there. When he's come to South River, he's, um, he's uh, promoted some of his sessions. Are those within AAP, AACPS, like PD sessions? Or are those like? Yeah, Unified Talent. You should be able to find those on Unified Talent, yes. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Yes. Yeah, so feel free to click on that survey. And I think Danny's about to show us his party survey from uh, that he was uh, created in Google Forms. There we go. That's, 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 sorry, that's freaking cool. Uh, <laughs> nice. So just replace, you know, what is, you know, mini spring rolls with, you know, what's the capital of whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. So cool. Um, so I know um, Danny's sound is skilled, but I will, um, <laughs> sorry, to, uh, I'll try and wrap up. But yeah, Danny, thank you for that. I, tons of cool information. I know your, your um, classes are available on Unified Talent. We will definitely send out the recording and you all should have uh, access to the presentation. So I know we didn't get through everything, but you have access there and there was tons of activities for you to try on your own. You know, give Copilot a try. You got Gemini. Like you said, they pretty, they're pretty they all fed by the same uh, information. So they will do the, essentially the same things just depending on kind of where you typically live in Microsoft or Google. So um, yeah, everybody, thanks a lot. Don't forget the session attendance and have a good fourth session. And I think you just said the answer to this question, but like it, it Gemini is more Google, Copilot is more Microsoft, and one is it's better for the apps within that that live within that system, but they can still talk to one another. Is that? Um, uh, yeah, 